Hello everyone, Josh here at Community Chrysler. Take this uh, 2005 Chrysler Crossfire out for a quick test drive. Uh, it is powered by Mercedes-Benz uh, V6 engine, 6-speed manual transmission. Basically this vehicle is based on the uh, Mercedes-Benz SLK Roadster. However, this is a hardtop uh, version. They also made a coupe. Pretty nice. Everything in here is pretty much Mercedes-Benz, with the exception of the seats. They're Chrysler Crossfire specific. Uh, but the dashboard, the steering wheel, and all the interior trim is all Mercedes-Benz. Uh, it's black leather, has the mineral gray uh, exterior paint, Infinity Premium audio system, also has heated seats, and a deployable spoiler. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and take it on a short drive. apologize in advance for the uh, rattling. That's uh, probably one of my camera mounts. The Crossfire was the first uh, true a sign of the merger between Daimler Benz and Chrysler Corporation to become Daimler Chrysler. It was the first joint effort between the two companies uh, for to, to join technology together. So what they did was they took the existing Mercedes-Benz SLK platform, frame, engine, transmission, and they Chrysler then uh, designed their own vehicle because during that time, during the 2000-2005 era, uh, Chrysler was going uh, a little bit on the retro slash old school kick. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Some of it is still around the day is it, uh, in the Challenger and the Charger. Um, however, back then we had the Prowler and we also had the uh, PT Cruiser and the Crossfire. Then they started bringing back the old Art Deco look in the 300. Uh, and about this time is when also the new LX platform vehicles, the 300 and the um, Charger came out and the Magnum. Uh, and that's when we dropped the Chrysler Concorde, the Chrysler LHS, the Chrysler uh, 300M and the Dodge Intrepid. So we're going less away from the sleek look to the more um, angular old older look of the art deco era so and the crossfire is a good merger of the two uh, it's got really great body lines um, it's very typical of a roadster long long hood and short back this one is more of a sweeping back line kind of reminiscent of the old teardrop coupes from the 1930s and 1940s the one vehicle that comes to mind for me is a Tabo Lago. Uh, it's a French teardrop coupe. Uh, and then of course the Bugatti Atlantique, which the Chrysler Atlantic concept in 1995 was derived from. The And you can see a lot of the exterior elements in both of those cars in the Crossfire, which kind of is, I like it. Uh, it has the slatted front hood the angular uh, headlamps and then also has the egg crate grill but being that it is still a modern vehicle it has a lot of modern amenities uh, driver side passenger side airbags with passenger detection also has side impact airbags mounted in the doors eight-way power seats on the driver and passenger side dual zone automatic climate control Heated seats, deployable spoiler, traction control, stability control. Uh, so there's a lot, there's a lot of modern touches on this car for it being so old. I guess old school is not really the word. It's more retro. I guess old school would be the word. Deep 
with it, it's blood though. It's a Mercedes Benz SLK. And it's a very, very popular roadster which still is around today. I think it's in its uh, third generation now. And SLK is actually an, ac is, is a, an acronym. Well, it's not an acronym, it's an abbreviation. Uh, and SLK actually stand for three different words. Sport, uh, it's sport league, league, and compact. So they're sporty, they're light, and they're compact. Is basically what those are. And that's what the SLK actually stands for. Kind of a little history lesson on Chrysler and the type of cars that were their inspiration for their design. It's amazing how grippy these cars are. Wide tires, low stance. They they just they're sure-footed and they're playing it solidly. You you know, and I mean, being that they're German, I mean, you know exactly where you're going. Where you have the steering wheel point is exactly where the car's going to go. So there is no steering lag. So you can see like I'm barely you know moving the steering wheel and it reacts instantly. I don't know if you can see it, but this is another little classic car here. Not really classic, it's a Dodge Omni. Those were actually, I have a funny story about those. Those were also cross badged from a company in France to bring the ultra compact car to uh, the States. It was designed in 1978. It was a Simca Horizon, is what it was called. And then Plymouth had their Plymouth Horizon, Dodge had the Dodge Omni. I know I'm off track. A Chrysler Crossfire video, but Chrysler is Chrysler regardless. And it, it's a good segue into how uh, two different countries and two different types of auto marketing and manufacturing can merge together to make very, very successful vehicles. car, if you didn't know it had a V6, you'd almost think it had a V8. Uh, it sound, it has a V8 growl to it, and it has the pickup and the acceleration of the V8. And I think it, it all has to do with weight distribution, the fact that it's rear wheel drive, has a good transmission on it, and it's just a good power to weight ratio. So this car, this car will move. Anyway, that about sums it up for our video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And uh, I will see you again. Thanks for watching.